Welcome back, everyone, to it's another episode of Last Call. Last Call with the alcohol only on it is the Blue Wire Hustle Network YouTube channel. Now, join me on the line. It's Van here. Well, he'll be fighting once again. This time, though, it's going to be for a million dollar prize. He competes in the million dollar tournament. He's excited about that. It's a whole new uh, era and a new outlook for him. I'll give you once again former Bellator contender, now turned PFL, new signee and possible star. I give you it's Bubba Jenkins. Uh, Bubba, it, it starts off you PFL on uh, season one, April twenty third. Lance Palmer, uh, you've won a big fight. Is this a big fight? And I'm happy. Are you bad? You're hitting a guy who, you know, right off the bat, it's gonna come down to him either way. So, are you happy you get him right off the bat in this tournament? Well, two things. First, you said possible star. And I don't know anybody who sees me move or sees me talk and don't think that I'm a star. That's one. Secondly, man, I'm so pumped for this fight. Um, I'm a little disappointed because it's like a pay cut. Like you said, it was going to come down to him either way. You would think that, you know, the two Division One wrestlers, um, national finalists with, you know, the same agent. Um, we would have been on different sides of the bracket and, you know, tried to have met up in the finals. Um, you know, I, I, I definitely would have loved to fight him for a million dollars. Um, but it's, you know, the first round of the, t- the tournament and it's much less than a million dollars. But, you know, um, regardless of when you beat that guy or beat uh, that caliber of, of guy, you, you know, you're in the mix as one of the best. You're in the mix as, you know, the, the new favorite. Um, and, and that's what I'm planning on doing, man. I'm planning on setting this tournament on its head, setting the brackets on its head, breaking whatever expectation they had of, you know, the three-peat and you know, all the other guys having their newfound glory and what they've trained to be and try to beating Palmer, you know, me putting, me adding me into the mix um, as a dynamic wrestler, uh, an explosive fighter, someone who's got a mindset that is, you know, never to fail, never to go backwards. I've never lost, I've only learned and the time usually just ran out. So I'm truly at a place where I'm excited about what's coming. And, you know, I don't know if he's ready for the first round fight that we have going, but, you know, I'm, I'm, to surely have prepared for it. How much do you like the fact, though, but he, you know how, you know how to fight him. You know how to beat him. He's a, a wrestler striker. There's no jujitsu. There's nothing funky about him. It's, you know, it's his style is Nova King. You know, give it time, it works. How much do you enjoy the fact that he's basically a guy that on paper you match up pretty well with? Love it. Um, love it. I'm not sure uh, what what the fans from, you know, his crew and his people, you know, are, I I think they're um, weighing in on his past achievements. Um, And, you know, when I mentioned the fact that, okay, you want to weigh in on his past achievements, but he never won nationals and he's lost to me three times out of four. um, Then they want to say, oh, that was 13 years ago. So truly um, I'm, I'm, I'm in love with the matchup. Um, I feel like I'm a much better striker than him. We've been in the game for literally legitimately the same amount of time. Um, You know, he, he, of course, as a dominant wrestler is going to have some chokes and some, you know, some things like that, that are going to, you know, make him a little bit more, I I would say dangerous than the average jiu-jitsu guy because of the wrestling positions that we get in and, and the way that I know that I've been coached to capitalize on some of those positions as a, as a jiu-jitsu practitioner, but like you said, man, uh, on paper, in my head, in my eyes, and in my camp, we match up very well. Um, I've, I, I've watched him fight Andre Harrison a couple of times, and I just feel like I'm a better version of Andre Harrison. And, you know, the second time that he fought Andre Harrison, he basically just wrestled him and he couldn't get out, which I don't see happening with me. But also the first time he wrestled him or the first time he fought him, um, Andre just kind of walked him down and did what he needed to do. And that's pretty much, you know, where I see, where I see myself fitting in there. At. On this tournament. It's going to be, as you said, it's win in advance, win in advance. How much do you feel the style helps you in that you've done this before? As you said, years and years wrestling tournaments, whether it was in junior high, high school, college, uh, the amateur scene. How much do you feel that this tournament helps you? Because you know what it's like to have those days where it's all right, back to back fights, heating them, don't get hurt. You basically just go win. It might be boring, but a win is a win. It helps you advance. 
Yeah, man, it's 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 right up my alley. It speaks my language. Um, one of the reasons why I even signed with Bellator in the beginning, before Scott Coker came in, when Bjorn was uh, you know, running the ball, was when what was the fact that it was tournament. You know, there was not many ways that you can reach the title without having beat some of the best people. Um, to be the champ, you got to beat the champ. And the fact that they're giving me the champ first round, and you know, I I put I plan to put every forty five pounder on notice, not only in in the PFL, but in the world, you know, this is not just a, a statement that I'm about to make for the PFL organization that I want to win the million dollars more than anybody else in the tournament. But, um, you know, I've come full circle to being a full fledged, well-rounded fighter. Uh, I, I, I can't say that I've, I've mastered and become a black belt in jujitsu or anything like that, but you know, I, I didn't take the elevator up to the top of the mountain. You know, I, I had to take the long slippery, icy black ice route and I crawled and I climbed and I crawled and I climbed. I went to China, I went to Beijing, I went to uh, Dubai, I went to Bahrain, I went to Russia. And, you know, I, I, I'm full circle with knowing that I'm one of the best and I plan to put that on display. Take me back to March 11th, 2017, ACB 54, you lose to Ali Bagab. And I'm guessing at that point it's the lowest point because it's now back to back losses. Almost everybody has jumped off the bandwagon. Uh, for most people, that's when your career basically is dead. When and I will always thought when your career dies, you have two choices. You can either pull Lazarus, come back, or you can retire. For you, mm-hmm. what changed after that fight? Because you've now gone on to beat Diego Marlon, you've beaten Elias Bugazmi, you've beaten Lucas Martinez, who is a phenomenal fighter. What changed? Like what made you go from a guy losing to Georgie and Ali to being Lucas Martinez now? being a guy who's a favorite in this tournament. Yeah, man, just being smarter. You know, sometimes you 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 let the tough guy come out a little bit more than the smart guy should come out. You know, um, neither one of those guys that I lost to made weight. And that's that's not a, no excuse on my part, but it's just understanding um, the times. You shouldn't take short notices. I'm not a guy that should take short notice fights. You know, uh, I can I, if you talk trash to me at the bar, I'm not going to stretch out or warm up or nothing. I, I'm going to take off on you. But when it comes to this fight game, when it comes to building a career, when it comes to being strategic, strategic and like Mike Tyson told me when I was uh, doing the ultimate fighter show it isn't the tough guys that make it as long as you as long as he's made it as long as the the better guys have made it it's the smarter more calculated guys and everybody knows I'm the type of warrior that will fight anyone at any time no matter you make way you don't make way three days from now five days from now but when I get in the camp I've never lost a fight when I've been in a full camp um, and that's because my mind is right my preparation is right my mental my spiritual everything comes together um, when you put it all together like that and I'm truly a person that learns from my mistakes. I learn fast. I adapt well. And, you know, what happened was I just refused to to go backwards. I refused to see myself as a loser in those competitions when I know that uh, I could have performed much better. I could I, I could have had much better preparation. Um, you know, I have been invited to, you know, have UFC contracts, but also those things were on short notice or upper weight class and things like that. So it's really about having the smart approach to everything that you're doing and not harder, but smarter. How tough was that for you in the beginning, having to be less aggressive, be more patient when, as you said, you enjoy going for the knockout. When we saw you before, when it was working, it worked fantastic. How do you move? You, you pushed forward the action with guys like Poppy's Martinez. You pushed the action. You got results. How much did the sort of a cardio hockey fight show you that, okay, I can't just go in there. I have to have a plan. I have to sometimes maybe take that first two, three minutes, figure out what he's going to do, figure out at least what I can and can't do without getting caught with something. Yeah, that's part of, you know, learning the sport. That's part of becoming a mixed martial artist. I started in this sport basically being a street fighter and a national champ wrestler. And that's not what the sport is named. It's not, you know, fighting. It's not, it, it, it's not like, you know, sh- sh- it's not irregulated to where it's just, you can hop off the couch and do these random things. And that's what I believe that most people have uh, a misconsumption of that 
oh, I can do that. You see them on TV fighting and, you know, you've, you've done some combat, some kind of combat in your life. And you're just like, oh, I'll just I'll just do my thing. And, you know, that'll work and that'll come to play. But um, when you really have to sit down and analyze the type of athletes that you're fighting, the type of mixed martial artists that are in the game, the way that the game is formatted, you know, wrestling was a six minute, sometimes seven minute thing. Um, this sport, you, there are no pins. You have to take them out. You, you have to make them stop. You have to make them yell or you, you really have to go all the way. And when you calculate all the all the formula to the recipe of success in mixed martial arts, um, you can't take out anything that uh, you can't take for granted anything that you haven't put in work before. Um, it's going to give you everything you put in and it's going to show the results of the things you've worked when you're not in front of the people, when you're not in front of the eyes, when when no one's watching. And and that's what I was really focusing on. Some people lie to self. I can't lie to self. I couldn't couldn't tell myself, oh, I'll just I'll just take everybody down because there's gonna be a day eventually I'm gonna wrestle a wrestler and the takedown is not gonna be as freely, you know, as free. So it's really understanding what the task is at hand, understanding how to climb that mountain, understanding the right terrain, having the right people in your corner to push you up that mountain because you know most of it is mental and you know if you don't have the right mental people around you, you have a bunch of cowards around you and things like that it can bleed into your psyche and uh and fear is a spirit so it, it can it can do all kinds of things to you so when you go in with confidence when you go in with knowledge to of what you're getting ready to do when you go in prepare to climb whatever mountain or whatever tree or whatever thing that's in front of you and you have all the tools necessary that confidence it, it just it zooms from you it's a lonely sport. You are you're basically naked out there because there's no backup. There's, it isn't like soccer, baseball, basketball, hockey, football, where you can play teammates. You're basically naked out there fighting. How lonely does it get sometimes when there's not many people who can understand what you go through? There's not many people who can put up with what you do. There's not many people who can understand that. you got to sometimes sacrifice a lot, whether it's eating, whether it's drinking, whether it's going out sometimes even you know eating just on the weekends but how tough has it been for you all these years just having you know people who support you when a lot of people don't get you know this this fighting lifestyle it's not something for weak to heart it literally basically takes everything and then something yeah man and it and it's part of having um the strongest muscle on my body is between my ears and you know it helps me to Car carpentalize. What is that word? Car uh, I want to say I have a hard time with this you know, word. I, you know, yep, go ahead. Yeah, Everyone yeah, who's it's, trying it's, to say carpentalize, yeah. or it, I put it in sections, is what I want to say. I, I break it down and I put it in categories, and I gotta understand it inside and out. Um, I I tell the troops, I tell the guys that I coach, and I, you know, me and Dewey Cooper have started our own fight gym um, at Big Scary Gym, and we're we're named. Black Cobra MMA team relentless and we always say chop wood chop wood and some people don't understand what I mean by chop wood like you said it's cold in there it's a cold lonely sport and if you're chopping wood knowing that winter's coming when the winter comes and it gets lonely you got a little bit of fire under your ass to, 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 to light it you got a little bit of work that you put in to make yourself warm and that type of concentration on preparing for the task at hand, having the right people in, in, around you to help you chop wood or help you mentally prepare to chop wood. Um, that type of thing is not something that you can overlook. Uh, being 100% prepared, being in the right mindset, all that, it all matters. Tell me about the gym. Why start it? I mean, it's, it's a business that's very tough. It's not like it's going to make a million dollars. Why did you and Dude Cooper want to start your own gym? And how tough was it, you know, getting this thing off the ground when you're going to be a smart businessman? You're going to show, you know, a portfolio. You're going to show a business plan. You're going to show investments. How much time, work, and how much thought went into this, you know, in the Black Cobra in the beginning? Well, man, I'm, I'm truly anointed to do the things that I do. You know, if I try to limit myself to, you know, only certain seasons in my life, then I really hold back on what I feel like the Lord is trying to do in my life. And this is something that I know that he put on my plate and anything he put on my plate, I'm going to eat anything. 
any kind of any way he takes it takes me i'm going to be guided um it says the footsteps of a righteous man are guided by the lord and i'm truly in that place where i just try to be a good man i try to give my gifts that i've learned that i've dug out of the mud the gold mining that i've done with the golden nuggets that i've had i want to give those things away i have two sons and a, and a beautiful daughter um to, to show them how to not only continue at your own dreams and build while you're headed in that direction is something that I, 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 will, eventually, I, I will eventually say to them, but after saying it for so long, they will only see the things and, and, and see the things that I've done. They will, will eventually stop listening to all the great advice that I have given them. And they were going to need to see, um, they're going to need to see the stuff that I'm talking about and me building a gym and me winning titles and me helping other fighters pursue their dreams is something that I know that they can see with tangible eyes. And I know that's something that they can grasp onto. I'm building an inheritance for my children. Um, if I'm afraid of the task at hand, if I'm afraid of the dream because it seems too big, then I'm not dreaming big enough. You must be afraid of what's coming. You not afraid. You must be, you must be a little bit, um, a little bit, the dreams that I have, they must frighten you a little bit in a sense of like, man, that's big. That's, 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 that's bigger than I've, I've ever thought, you know? And, and when you come to a place of seeing that type of not scared, cause I don't want to ever say that I'm scared. I'm just, I'm not fearful, but having that type of work that I know needs to be put in to create a successful gym, to have successful fighters. Um, that's something that I, I, I reach for. That's something that I want to go after. You know, me fighting Lance Palmer first round of the, of the, of the title. That's a big type of thing. And that's not something to be afraid of, but that's something to be respected, such as my dreams and goals. Well, very heavy, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, he'll be fighting. It is once again, PFL season. It's going to be only on ESPN April 23rd against Lance Palmer. We're proud to have once again on the show. I give you it's Bubba Jenkins. Uh, Bubba, before let's go, where can the fans check you out? And where is a Twitter page, Instagram, the website? Man, I'm um, Bubba underscore at? Jenkins on Twitter. I'm Bubba underscore Jenkins on uh, Instagram. Uh, I think I have a Snapchat, but I think I'm just bad man Jenkins on Snapchat. I, I, I don't go to it that much. I'm, I'm, I'm getting older in my days. And like you said, I'm building gyms and teaching fighters and traveling all over the place trying to, you know, build my empire. But um, yeah, man, y'all, I'm not hard to reach. Anybody can reach out to me, man. All the social medias, I don't block anybody unless you're talking too much trash or unless you're trying to seep into my psyche, which is a still trap. So honestly, man, you speak to me, I speak back. You talk to me, I talk back and, and I'm down to earth. So we're going to continue this ride towards the top. We're going to continue this hype. Um, we're going to continue letting the haters know that we gives no fucks about what they're saying and we're going to keep chopping. Bubba Jenkins, ladies and gentlemen, once again, we're proud to have on the show. Uh, stay tuned for more great action only on It Is Last Call. Last Call, but the, but the alcohol only on It Is Last Call YouTube channel.